Welcome to Mean Age Daydream with me, Brian McWilliams, where we're going to be making some jokes, laughing out at broken world, but also laying out some philosophy for the future, how we can fix this mess we're in and have a great time doing it all with the Mean Age Daydream. Oh man, what's up, Buttercups? Uh, I, as you can probably hear and see if you're watching, am still really under the weather. Um, I'm, just, I just get one one time a year laid out completely by a uh, this time I don't know some sort of infection. It's up in my throat, my lungs, my head. Got antibiotics for it, and of course, because I am hated by the universe, I go to the doctor finally, right? Cause I, I, I'll wait like two weeks. I'm like, all right, I have to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Finally get my antibiotics. I walk to CVS to pick them up. As I'm leaving CVS, I go into a crazy coughing fit. And of course, throw my fucking back out. So I currently am sitting here. It hurts to talk. It hurts to sit. It hurts to move. I have to go back to CVS now to get some muscle relaxers. So what we're going to do in this show and I encourage you to listen to the whole thing so you'll enjoy it, is we are going to talk quickly about two topics, one of which is a 485 million climate surface data study that basically obliterates all of this climate nonsense, at least in my opinion. And I'll go into that in more detail. Plus, we're going to talk about a, another, you know, it's funny, Donald Trump gets shot up more than once, and the rhetoric is, of course, a topic of discussion. And then you have idiots like Gina Raimondo, a former governor governor of Rhode Island on MSNBC, saying something that you just won't believe. So let's get into it. I'm going to do this. Then we'll go transition to the first episode podcast, which I promise you, you will love. Um, so this climate study came out and it is looking at it's i guess it's a combination of climate forecast models but they're using it to go in hindsight and you know temperature samples they've taken from the earth essentially what it did was look back and say okay what was the earth's climate in the past looking at this you know past 500 years they set a 485 million year mark because that's when i guess hard shelled fossils started to appear and what they found was quote unquote surprising. At least that was according to the Washington Post and several other liberal news outlets. And the data shows that surprise, 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 the earth is actually cooler now than at virtually any point in the measured history of the past 485 million years. That is not surprising to me. It shouldn't be surprising to anybody that has actually been paying attention, that has looked at scientific data, that's looked at fossil records, that's looked at just the way the earth has changed over the history and knows anything about anything. Because you look at dinosaurs, ah, ow, there's my back spasm, dinosaurs and insects and everything else. These are creatures that thrived in massively warmer environments. Lizards are cold blooded for fuck's sake. They thrive in very warm environs, as do a lot of these insects. And you know that they got, you know, the insects get larger because it was more capable. The atmosphere was able to basically burden, you know, well, unburden these insects so they could be larger. And all of this talk that's been going on about man made climate change and how it's this existential threat is ridiculous in the context of history. I mean, I've said this before, I'll say it again now because <laughs> I've been pr proven correct here. <coughs> we, <coughs> to say that we are somehow massively changing the earth around us in our infinitesimal way is an exercise in egoism. That's it. That's it. it it's unbelievably stupid to presume that considering all of the changes, all the differences in how Earth has looked, has reacted, has evolved, as I said, you know, we are at the one of the coolest points in history. And yes, humanity is thriving. But that doesn't mean that because we're altering the Earth a tiny fraction, we are in danger. No. What it means is that the Earth is going to Earth. It's going to do what it's going to do. It could rely on solar activity. It could rely on meteor striking things. It could rely on the magnetic poles. We were just doing a call with our, our high-level supporters group. And uh, <coughs> God, I'm sorry, guys. This is why I'm going to do a really short show and then transition to the first step. We were talking about how the poles are going to shift. Um, and it's happened numerous times in the past. It can alter very quickly the axis of the Earth. 
and tilt us into a brand new environment. This could cause creative, you know, tectonic plates to shift. This could cause massive earthquakes, massive tidal waves. You know, you find, and we were just talking about this too, because coincidentally, I just watched a show talking about this. Woolly mammoths that are flash frozen in ice with food in their stomachs and their mouths. How does this happen? Well, if you've got the earth adjusting its axis very quickly and you have massive temperature changes, this is possible. And you're telling me we need to deny people basic access to fossil fuels, you know, make life more ex you know, extremely expensive, inconvenient, uh, put people back into poverty after they've crawled out of it using technology and fossil fuels because we're changing the temperature of the earth. Maybe, by the way, no definitive proof has ever been provided for that. Every model has been wrong. But you're telling me we should massively adjust and basically hamper our ability to survive and thrive because of this pretend climate change issue, which is infinitesimal when compared to the massive changes that have happened throughout the history of the earth. And then you have this study coming out showing that whatever we do is probably not going to matter in the long run. In the long run, it might not even be that long. There are global cataclysms that can occur and we are not going to be able to do anything about it. The only one we might be able to avert would be a meteor coming in. And even then, I don't know if that's going to be possible. What, fire nukes at it? This is why it's true what Elon Musk says. We have to go out into the world because at any point in time, life could end here instantaneously. And there ain't jack we can do about it. So this study provides ample evidence how stupid this entire thing is, how it's such a scam, a grift. It's from people to have control, to spend money, to make money. And then... You have this study showing that, surprise, Earth's been way warmer, so shut the fuck up about warming, and yet they go into this whole bullshit, because they have to, right? To get this study published, you have to put this in there. And these people might believe it either way. I mean, I'm sure they do. You know, almost everybody in academia is a leftist anyway. But they go and put this study out, and of course they put in there, well, you know, this is, this is true. The Earth was way, 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 way warmer. But at the same time, Human-made climate change is really causing some issues like sea level rise. Bullshit, by the way. We saw like, you know, evidence coming out of all these islands that have gotten bigger. They told us to be under the water. It's ridiculous. But they, they talk about how, oh, this is still a threat and we still have to, to worry about it. This is cognitive dissonance. If you want to see a perfect example of cognitive dissonance, you can read these papers that have been put out by these people that showcase it in its brightest spotlight ever. You are telling us that this all is nonsense that the earth is going to do what it's going to do, that massive shifts and changes in temperature are going to happen way before humanity was out there. And yet at the same time, you're going to tell us that it's vital that we stop fucking around with the climate and we have to step, cut off all the fossil fuels because we're going to change things maybe a degree and we can't handle that as humans. I got news for you. If we can't handle a degree as humans, we're going to go extinct regardless. So how do we work on technologies that are going to help protect us rather than hinder people from becoming more than they have. To, you know, why would you want to hamper your ability to technologically advance for people all over the world to technologically advance, to get to a new plane of living, a new plane of success, a new plane of stability. So we can plan for the future when more than a climate change issue of one and a half degrees is going to happen. And we might be facing a cataclysm. Does it make a fuck a lot more sense to do that than it does to tamp down everything? Yes, it does. Morons. Okay, moving on. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about <coughs> is <coughs> Kamala's Commerce Secretary uh, calling for President Trump to, quote, be extinguished for good. And this she will say is a slip of the tongue. She just means he can't get elected again, but it really but does he showcase. Says is the opposite. It's just another lie. Like, how did we get here? Let's extinguish him for good. We have an answer. We have a remarkably talented candidate who is sincere, who's pragmatic, who's open. Let's just get it done. Yeah, yeah. Let's extinguish him for good, right? Yeah, good job. Yeah, we have, we, yeah, we know how to get it done. Yeah, you do. You do. You certainly have tried twice. I mean, these people are baseless in their morals. They do not care. They want Trump to get shot. That much is obvious. And for this idiot to come out here and say that flat out after what's happened is just, I mean, <coughs> disqualifying. Disqualifying. She should immediately, 
uh, be disqualified from holding any office whatsoever if you're going to make a statement. And even in, he should say, well, I didn't mean it like that. I, I think you did. I think it's a Freudian slip. Anyway, I'm in a Freudian try to slip my back back into place and get my muscle relaxers at CBS. Wish me luck. Enjoy the first episode podcast, guys. Give it a try. I think you will really love it. Uh, support us on Patreon. Support us on Locals. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right. Bye. Yeah, first episode Hello. podcast. We're back, baby. Rico's getting set up. I decided to start the show knowing Rico would come through in the end. Yes. Uh, he does not have the punctuality of a Korean hotel operator. Uh, no, he does that. not. <laughs> Who also commits murder. Similarities, because you know what I was doing as you texted angrily. I, was I didn't text angrily. I texted hilariously. <laughs> what were you doing? Talking to Asians? I can't hear you because you're not. your mic's not near you idiot he puts his microphone 10 feet away <laughs> nope it doesn't seem like it's working can't hear you not working well, Rico. there we go now well, i can hear you now it's on now it's not i don't know it. what's happening it's going in and out i don't think it's i think you're using your airpods and not your actual microphone is the problem nope just uh well we're just gonna look for we go <laughs> well what i was saying we decided to start the show because i have been battling uh, yet another cold, which is uh, my life with two little kids. He and battles them. I battle them, yeah. and I. And, the thing and, is, and you, I, you're not a good battler. You seem to be losing the battle frequently. I always lose the battle, <laughs> but I win the war because I'm still alive. That's it. That's well, the thing. Yeah. I keep. I am. Oh. I am uh, 97 and 0 so far against viruses. <laughs> and, and he does that for for you, our fans of the FEP. Podcast. Yeah, I'm like I'm like the Vietnamese against the Americans. I'm, I'm gonna, I lose a lot of battles, but I'm going to win the war. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that, that brings us to our second show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True, but I uh, I've been being good. I haven't been drinking. Now Ooh, we can hear Rico. Your, when Rico's off problem. screen, we can hear him perfectly. I can hear him blowing when, uh, his nose. I can hear him. I can hear him washing out his asshole for the podcast. When an Irish, when an Irish person doesn't drink alcohol, their body deteriorates. I hope you know yeah. that. So that's uh, yeah, yeah. You you need to start drinking again, and the more the merrier, as they say. Well, whiskey, uh, the 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 nectar of life, man. Whiskey, oh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, they name they named the drink after you guys, Jameson. You just have to drink it, you know, in the morning. It yeah. is my middle name is James, but it, I think it's true. <laughs> it's like in Futurama, the robots have to drink alcohol to keep mm -hmm. their batteries charged. That's the same with the Irish. But it's like I was not drinking. I'm like, I don't want to be sick. I got to recover. I hate being sick now with the kids. You said being mm -hmm. sick used to be enjoyable because you're like, oh, to sit around and do nothing, and now it's miserable. Mm. Yes, Rico. Drink Rico, me. I can't. Oh, there you go. Well, okay. but. Stop now I can hear you. Go talk, talk. I don't want to anymore. You're just gonna say I, you can't hear me. It's gonna be a bit on the show, even though you can. <laughs> like what? What? Huh? What? Huh? All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you guys. Um, you you just when you say you haven't been drinking, do you mean since like Monday? Because it's when the Eagles yes. played. So. No, actually, I didn't drink Monday. I stayed home. I didn't drink Sunday. I didn't drink well, Monday. That's why Saquon dropped the pass because you weren't. I know. Back. I know. Don't even bring it up. It makes me fucking furious. Unbelievable. Penn State's own Saquon Barkley letting the whole the whole nation of Eagles down. But I uh, <laughs> I've come to the conclusion though. Yeah, I, I not drinking doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything to help your immune system. Just keep drinking. Keep doing everything. Keep doing all the yeah. things. It makes no difference. Whatsoever. I, I don't know about that. I remember when yeah. I would get like You're gonna a die throat. anyway. I would get a sore throat in college and it would last two months. Because every time well, it would get it. it would get you better. You keep putting I'm dicks like, down there eventually. Yeah. No, I, I kept you thinking get, it would scratch the tonsils. You think the calluses though. would build up on your throat after a while. <laughs> 
Maybe it's a herpes. I don't know. It's like playing guitar, yeah. Rico. Rico, you're still too far for your fucking mic, Doug. Barely here. <laughs> and the mic sucks yeah. that you sent me. Much it's, like the you can't have it twenty feet from your college. head. You have to be close to it. Next to me. It's still too far for me. Yeah. Well, I don't know what else to do because this is where I always sit and I'm comfortable. I'm not going to move. It's the so. dedication of the show that really comes through. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, so I have a very annoying thing that just happened to me. It's been a frustrating evening. I go mm. to put a pot away in my cabinets. That's a newly remodeled cabinetry. I put a pot on the shelf and the shelf in the cabinet, it's a long, deep shelf. The shelf is like five feet long, maybe four feet long, deep. It's pretty long. It's pretty long. It's a deep, long shelf that goes into the corner of the cabinets. I put a big pot on it. Fucking thing falls down. And I'm like, God damn it. All the pots fall off. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to put the little nugget back in. You know, the little nuggets you put in there. Oh, yeah, hold yeah, them yeah. Up. The little shelf right. nuggets you put under the shelf. So I put the shelf nugget yeah. back in there and I fix it. I put the shelf back up. I put the pot back on. I turn my back. Boom. Falls down again. I'm like, you motherfucker. All the pots oh, fall down man. again. So That's I go in there. I put it on a different level. I replaced the little nugget. I'm like, this nugget must be broken. Why is the shelf falling down? Even if the pot is heavy, it doesn't make sense. It's braced by the nuggets on all four sides. Sure as shit, the shelf falls down again, completely falls down, knocks all the little nuggets out. So before the show, I was ass deep in cabinets. Like if you imagine if somebody crawled up a whale's ass, that's what I look like crawling up a sphincter of a whale mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. fix my cabinet. And I got there, I, I adjusted all the little things, like all the little nuggets, moved them up one nug little nugget level so that they wouldn't fall out fucking again. Widget myself in there, my six foot three body to fix these fucking cabinet nuggets. So, Humble brag. That was, yep, thank you. <laughs> was and, and, fit enough, and fit enough to get under there, by the way. A fat man could not have fixed that, that oh, specific yeah. problem with these yeah. nuggets. So that was, that was the payoff of the story. Well, how did you have, did, yeah. you, did you remedy the, 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 the pegs? Were you able to? I, I remedied like, it, but. Uh, when uh, Kramer was hosting Newman on the Merv Griffin set, <laughs> and Newman was telling about his bunions, and he's like, "Well, we've officially hit rock bottom." That's what I thought during your story. I'm sure people at home are nodding along, I being like, it. "I hate that." No yeah, one we've all, yeah, we all, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, you, the, the the you wear out the hole of the peg, and then it wants to. Droop, they should be worn out. <laughs> They're new holes and new pegs. It's like a uh -huh. a, a freshly trafficked prostitute. What Brand new holes. Done? Uh, that whole got it's its charge and work. Credit yeah, card the whole Jeez. kitchen remodel. Yeah, <laughs> like that whole it's defective. That was, sending it it was an old. It was an old hole that you started. old hole. An old, old hole. hole. <laughs> you know they say old hole, old soul. Oh, so if yeah. you uh, if you enjoy these cabinet <laughs> talk, uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button. <laughs> <Goodbye>. <laughs> ah, I just spilled water over my crotch. Yeah, oh, this night. That's what what else can happen? Every other week. That's what happens when you <laughs> smash the button. You get water on your crotch. All right. What should you? Yeah. Should we, all right. Speaking of trials and tribulations of life. All right. Let's talk about the Wonder Years. That's our first show. The Starting Wonder Years. There. How do you? Let's go? talk about a show that featured, uh, I think, prominently the first stereotypical Jew. Uh, maybe not the first. I'm sure there are many more. But Paul the Nerd in the Wonder Years. Really coming he in went, there with the they, I'm allergic to really, Junis. They didn't really make him so Future Mark the first Goldman. episode. He, he, they made him exception. What are you talking about, Don? He's like he was literally like I have he's allergic like he's lighting to meatloaf. Hanukkah candles I, or anything. I, I can't. I had to go inside and scrape my knee. Well, that's coming. Don't worry. That's the that's the holiday episode, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean he was eating ham, I think. <laughs> He was not eating ham. He ordered a salad. I don't he, know. I, he was eating yeah. white bread, uh, which was well, unleavened. Or leavened? Yeah. Leavened. I guess so. Which is the what one you can eat? Like yeast? Leavened. Uh, it depends when, what time of the year it is. Well, it's not. Let's say he's on Lent. Just kidding. Yeah. If, if he's on Lent, then. For sure. <laughs> he's, the, the, the meat he's supposed to eat is none. <laughs> None, like he's just supposed to <laughs> stalk and kill nuns from the Catholic Church. Yes, exactly. I feel like Israel's <laughs> going to get an even worse reputation if they start doing that. Beyond what's mm -hmm. happening, 
Um, so Wonder Years, it's I beyond, watched this show beyond growing me. up. <laughs> beyond me, <laughs> beyond none. <laughs> I did too. I, I thought it was a great show. Watching it again, I thought, wow, I didn't even realize how great it was when I was a youth as yeah. I was watching it again as an adult. Rico, you don't look impressed. I mean, it was, I, I, I guess you have to look at it through the spectrum of the 80s when there was like two other TV channels. Um, I think it's a show from the 90s. No, I know. No, I think it was the eighties. No, it was the nineties. I don't know, man. I, I well, it, it makes more sense if it's the eighties looking back because they talk about Nam a lot. I think nineties are already past the point where people are looking back at Nam and appreciating it. It was set in the sixties, but it was. I yeah. thought it was in the eighties. This was like the boomer fodder. Uh, these were all the people that grew up. At, in that era were watching their childhoods over again the way that they overlaid all the music and it was just like watching the forrest gump movie but watching a kid version of the show yeah you know so, what that's a that's yeah. a pretty good comparison i like that it was like Thank it is you. like watching forrest gump a little bit because you're reliving these right. historical moments and, and yes. iconic music i mean look the wonder years you know what would you do if i sang like, yes. that song is iconic uh and just and as there's a lot of the music in it but let me ask you this speaking of songs and music and uh volume did you notice watching the show because it's on hulu that yeah. the volume on it was so fucking low you have to jack it way up in order to hear <laughs> anything they're saying and then you change it to anything else you're streaming and the volume blasts your eardrums out it's one of the things i that did me yeah. off about streaming well, I think when that show was made, they didn't make it at, uh, with the high quality audio sound to it. We watched, we watched like Sanford and Son and, it, and Love Boat. And there was no problem with the volume. It's the way these assholes upload crap. They're I, like, well, well, I like, think why I know are you uploading it at a terribly low volume. No. So I have to turn my volume to 75% max on the TV in order to hear it. I'll tell you why they did that because they had to loop in old music from the 60s which didn't have a high fidelity quality to it. So they kept the sound of the show at the same speed of the set of the music that they were playing. Okay. Uh, this Bill sounds Spectre like over here illegal. talking about sound production. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I've, uh, I've done one. I've, I've edited a video or two. So <laughs> that, so they kept it consistent with, with the audio quality that they had of the music so that it would have a consistent sound with it. And then they also were showing all that war footage, which they had old quality. And if you look at it, they also shot it from a very kind of old looking perspective it when the 90s they had better cameras but i think they tried yeah to look, that's intentional yeah yeah they try to make it look really old i think to but play it's to like the your home that video time. that you're watching yeah um, which they christmas it, vacation yeah. when he's in the attic you know mm -hmm. yeah. watching the old grainy uh footage wonder yeah. years 1988 to 1993 told you it's yeah. in the 80s might have just um, been the technology they had yeah but they yeah they definitely i agree they definitely like made it look older and uh, by the way, I wanted to mention this. Do you know who does the voiceover for, aka the narration for the Wonder Years? I, yeah. I, I do. The White Band. Oh, you guys know. Yeah. I didn't think you know. Yeah. yeah. No. That's well, right. I, Dennis, I Dennis it, uh, Stein, yeah. I think, or Dennis Daniel Stern. Stern. Daniel, Daniel Stern. Stern. <laughs> I was watching it with my wife, and she goes, I love this show. She was watching it with me. And I go, that's the voice of the guy from City Slickers. And she goes, no, it's not. And then she looks it up <laughs> and goes, yes, it is. You yes, are right. It is. I go, what yeah, that's the dude from City Slickers. <laughs> that's who you would describe Daniel Stern from. That's interesting. Yeah, not Home uh, Alone. I, well, I like... I. He likes hey. slicking and he likes cities. What can he say? He's not... A, Don, Don, despite being I like literally the kid from Home Alone in no. his everyday life, I like that Literally, he's Don's just home alone every day, setting booby traps until his wife comes yeah. home from work. <laughs> I think that, associates I like that more with uh, city slickers, despite having moved yeah. to the country from the city. He works in a grocery store in that in that character, and then my wife also worked in a grocery store. That's why I said it. 
Yep, the mind works in funny and fascinating exactly. ways. You have to, you have to infiltrate it how you go. Store, yeah, exactly. Bring home a ham. Yeah. <laughs> People remember things in weird ways. You have to get in there like a worm. Yeah. Well, it's good that it's good that uh, St- or Daniel Stern's still working. Uh, yeah. Fred Savage is not. He was canceled. I think he, he got was just uh, in a commercial, wasn't he? I think he was just That's in a where... courtroom. <laughs> yeah, he was not. He was definitely. <laughs> He was definitely in trouble. Fred yeah. Savage canceled. Yeah, uh, he was like touching on boobs or something. So what? he was fired Bro- from as executive producer yeah. of the Wonder Years reboot after investigation into alleged inappropriate conduct. Mm. So apparently he had uh, perceived negative behavior, but that was enough. That was enough to like get him fired. I can't find anything more. It's just misconduct. It was um, a Me Too time. I think it was like early twenties. Yeah. Yeah, he got me too. He's like, he sidles up to some PA and he's like, well, what would you do if I fingered your hole? <laughs> would you, you go and rat out to me on the producers? <laughs> Wait, wasn't <laughs> Would he you in tweet the about Deadpool? me on the internet? <laughs> wasn't that what he, I, I just saw him. Was he in the new Deadpool? Might be he, as a joke. I mean, I haven't seen it. I, did, I did see it. Too. We're, I we're not I a, just saw him in something. We're not we're reviewing movies. This is a this is well. A we were talking about show. city slickers because your wife worked in a grocery <laughs> store. I know. So why not? A seamless well, transition. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a, a, a John, a John Odermatt level seamless transition. I was, I was <laughs> married to dead Ryan Reynolds, so it could be a good. <laughs> you go. dead. <laughs> John was Blake Lively before Blake Lively. <laughs> That's she true. actually, she actually, uh, single white female Don. And that's what nobody really understands about Blake Lively. Don was originally married to Ryan Reynolds, and Blake Lively came in and replaced him, stealing his identity. We were, we were so happy together. <laughs> I loved no, it. He, he seemed so funny and so kind. He was. So, by the way, this Nothing show like also, our relationship, Brian. <laughs> two, two Cooper facts. <laughs> Two Cooper facts from the show. So one of the characters in the show is Winnie Cooper. Uh, fun fact about Winnie Cooper. My first wank was to oh, Winnie Cooper well when done. I was a young boy. Fantastic. Which Winnie Cooper? Like this was not this year. in the pigtails or like when? Wh- I think when I was a young lad um, of, of 12 pretty, or 13. She's pretty when she When she debuted first... in her, in her uh, fishnets and sexy go-go dancer gear as referred to on the show. I think that's what did it for me as a 13 year old boy. I was like, Oh, Winnie. She, by the way, went on to become like an astrophysicist and which is great for her in today's world. She would have gone on to make an only fans. Now, one of these would have been better for me theoretically, but probably better for the world back then. I imagine the astrophysicist way is you want to go because uh, you're very concerned about the way that the stars are shaping and all that celestial nonsense. I'm worried. I'm worried about a uh, an asteroid hitting the Earth. So I'm glad Winnie Cooper is on it. Winifred, <laughs> Gwendolyn Winifred. Cooper, <laughs> uh, Winnie Gwen. Yeah, Gwendolyn. She wants to be called Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn. now. I don't know that that's a name you'd want to go to in junior high. It seems mm, yeah. You I'm no longer known as Winnie. Winnie. Well, Winnie the Pooh. You don't want to be Winnie the Pooh. Winnie. Well, I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? But if your voice in the hallway, you'd look at Winnie Cooper and you go, "Look at uh, Winnie the Cooper's pooper." Mm. Mm. That's good if stuff. only they had that kind of humor in the eighties. You would have ruled that school. <laughs> I'll go well, back would, and rule it would it have now. to be. I'll, I'll back. To be in Hello, the, fellow kids. In like the late sixties. Well, though. you're about the same age as a kid next to Kevin at a locker. Yeah. Like, I know. like okay, this kid's in seventh grade. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I'm a 20 so, year old like beating up this five, kid. Uh, what is it called? A five o'clock shadow. I don't know. Yeah. Five, seventh grade with a five o'clock shadow. Well, so, so that was one Cooper fact. Winnie Cooper was my first jerk as a young boy. Uh, second <laughs> Cooper fact her brother gets sent to Vietnam and dies. And what's her brother's name? Uh, Brian Cooper. Brian Cooper. <laughs> we Is all that know. Why became friends. Yep. I, well, maybe Donnie doesn't know. Him. One of my good friends is named Brian Cooper that went to Penn State with me and Rico. And uh, I totally forgot 
So I text him. I was like, hey, Brian, did you know that you died in Vietnam? He's like, no, I conveniently blocked that out from the Wonder Years. <laughs> you knew what you were talking about? He did. Yeah. How the yeah. fuck did he? No wonder your friends. No one else would be well, like, what Because he's Jewish. He had to watch because it had the first Jewish nerd in it. And uh, if you're Brian Cooper and there's a Jewish nerd in a TV show, how are you not going to watch? Like it's someone like yeah. me. <laughs> Hooray. So, yeah. That's the, it's all about representation. They We're, killed the wrong Brian Cooper. If, all if we could see him, we could be him. That's yeah. how it tell him that every day. <laughs> I Shut wish it was you, you, Coop. I Shut wish it was you. you. <laughs> I sent him a picture of the cool smoking guy with a Camaro on blocks. <laughs> Should have been you. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I had that car. That was a badass car. I'd put it, it together. Was. Worked yeah. on it every day, but never ran. Okay. Yeah. What are you yeah, that's not a bit very good. Oh, there you go. Hey, loser, you don't know how to shit. Let's get you in the front line of the Vietnam War. <laughs> and that's thing you know, he's dead. He's like, couldn't even build a car, couldn't even terrible, shoot a gun. terrible, so. fucking Vietnam, man. I not to bring us down, we never want to bring back smoking in shows. Big brother look cool smoking. Uh, oh, but also, I say that guy did look really cool, man. He was so like cool, super, super thin with his white t shirt. I'm like, I can't even oh, get a awesome. shirt that fits me these days i don't know how they got that well you gotta guy start guy smoking here. man ah, the pounds. Man. I, I but yeah I... vietnam what a bitch and you know what they learned yeah. uh you know what the people guiding the country learned from vietnam absolutely nothing i think we learned we like asian chicks from it well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 all right, all right, all right, all right. Up, I keep getting older. It's like it's, yeah. <laughs> Asian chicks are the same as it's literally yeah. from Days of Confused. I keep getting older and they just look or are the same age. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell, man. They just yeah. keep bringing me one time. There's only a billion of them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, anyway, this show takes place, as we said, uh, right you know, during the Vietnam War. Kevin is the lead. It is Fred Savage. Yeah, perfect casting. He's got an older brother, Wayne, who was the perfect asshole big brother. Yeah. The dad is like, I, I mean, he's not like Larry Zonka or anything or uh, or the dad <laughs> from Webster, but he kind of he kind of has that feel to him. He's like a big gruff guy, doesn't talk. The mom is a typical doting housewife, but the dad was great when uh, Kevin had a great line I wrote down. And the dad walks in the house and sits down and uh, Kevin goes, he goes, Dad worked for us. He provided for us. He shouldn't have to talk to us. And he goes, I waited to talk to Dad until after his first vodka tonic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those I like are the that. days. Mom, I'm just handing him a vodka tonic because he's sitting at the yes. table. Yes. Awesome. As soon as he walks in. Uh, what was his what? job? Did they ever say? I don't think I, I think maybe uh, the auto plant, but I don't know. He just, he just had a lot of rough, rough days at the button down shirt. Yeah. Maybe he's in management. I think he worked in somebody's yeah, brain because uh, he looked like the guy from the Herman's head. Disney, the, no, the Disney movie where <laughs> like, on myself, all those different I gotta, people. I got to blow my nose. I saw a snot on like. Yeah. Maybe it was a detective, right? Like uh, with definitely the short wasn't sleeve. a detective. <laughs> short sleeve shirt. Uh, salesman. <laughs> protector in there. Yeah. And he sold like cars or blenders they, maybe. they acted like he had like the toughest job ever but he's home at five o'clock and he starts drinking well, and also and his, yeah I, and his wife makes but, him a gin and tonic yeah, i'm I mean, like that's that's the best no one hands ever. me a drink when i get home no one's cooking me dinner you it's have a son rico kitchen. he make him do it oh well, teach yeah, him to bartend he, then when you move to la he can make more than i make yeah why why don't 100%. you have... bartending Actually, maybe I'll just make bartending. that's what my wife does to me i make all the drinks i could probably house. do bartending while i do my other job that's yeah i was thinking the same thing i don't know why i'm not i can send emails yeah. while i bartend what am i doing what and I my, my dream job was time. always to be a strip club dj and i could bartend while i'm sending emails coming right? to the stage <laughs> big dong johnson he comes from Not a male strip club, but you know sometimes i guess maybe you have to pay your dues and that's where you rico gives off. him four out of five boners <laughs> <He's talking about laughs> <boner up. laughs> here comes no, like up boner up ladies it's dollar I'm dance sorry. that's our yeah. only fans review podcast we're uh switching it for i would do soon. it i would do it for a quarter boner dance what? quarter quarter of <laughs> ounce of cocaine quarter chub yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever they throw at me, it's fine. I'm just waving it at your face. It's just yeah, exercise. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having a good time. <laughs> this Let's is a public pool. <laughs> I oh, so Kevin gets in trouble for uh, his brother teases him, and Winnie Cooper sits with him at the table, and he's like, "I don't even like her," and he runs away because he's embarrassed, and then he throws an apple, which gets him in trouble in the principal's office, and they call the parents, and this is something you see in all these shows: the both parents in the principal's office in the middle of the day. Yeah, mm. how important could his what? dad's job be that he left work because his son threw a fucking apple? I mean, if my school called me and was like, your son threw an apple, you're going to need to come in. I'd be like, why don't you <laughs> shove that apple right up your fucking yeah. ass? Go pick up. And get back apple. to work. <laughs> yeah. Don't call me unless my kid kills somebody. Like, how'd fuck you get off. my number? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, like how many? I, call me when he. Call me when he throws my eight tax apples. dollars paid for that apple. <laughs> yeah, it's like what the fuck. Both mom Wouldn't and dad have, are there sitting. Like he has to take off work. If he hit Wayne with the apple, because that's yeah. what I was hoping for. That would have been great. Like, he just, just gets a crap kicked out of his brother right in the fucking head because he's. A could dick. just roll awesome. the apple back in there too, less aggressively. I wonder if that would have had a different outcome if he just rolled it in there. He goes here, just the placed apple it back. inside because the yeah. principal told me he couldn't bring the apple into the hallway. Right, no. he runs out with an apple. The principal stops him. Hey, you see that sign? No food outside the cafeteria. And little Kevin Arnold goes through his head all the different things to do and say, mm. and then uh, he does what Brian Cooper would have done. Mm -hmm. Which, if he was really doing that, as Brian done, Cooper would have been di to, to lie on the floor uh, dead with a Viet yeah. Cong bullet in him, but he didn't know at the time, so he throws an <laughs> apple back in. What the if it was friendly instead. fire? I'm sure <laughs> oh, maybe <laughs> could have been right or like a bad grenade throw. He, pretend, like he pretends to bite the apple, and he's like, yeah. "Fire in the hole!" and it ricochets off the glass back to his hands. Could be. Um, but, anyway, poor Brian. There Cooper. was a pretty cool wrestler like 10 years. He's still around, actually. His gimmick was he would come down to the ring with an apple, take a bite, and spit it in his opponent's face. He just cool. hold it in his mouth the whole time until that happened. No, no. He's walking Johnny down apple to the ring with an apple in right. his hand. Right. And he would take a get in the ring. What was his name? Carlito. Oh, and, uh, and none of his opponents ever got wise that this was going to yeah, happen. I mean, eventually they did, but it was, <laughs> yeah. when 12, he was 12, 50 wrestling the jobbers, you know, they didn't the, have time to the, oppo it. the opponents brought like a pot of soil so that if he spit at them, they could then just plant the the apple core. I don't. One awesome guy that. should have had melted caramel <laughs> in his mouth, and he spits the apple, and he just opens it up. He's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. thank you. I, I don't want to wrestle after eating a caramel <laughs> apple. Uh, <laughs> I'm the but apple boy. <laughs> Kevin should have done that. Just take a bite of the apple and spit it back in the lunchroom. There, there it is. There you go. Yeah, right. Yeah, here's so, your apple, a hole. All right, so moving the sporks. We're already 27 minutes in here. No, no, so no. Kevin, you, you, you forgot a gym great, class. Hold on, you forgot a I great a scene at the at the. Why does Don keep going? What do you? Do you have? Light keeps going off. I don't. know It's weird. Oh, but I um, keep, oh, it's because uh, yeah, he says you're backlit with that stupid lamp. But uh, when they're sitting around the table when the dad gets home and having his first vodka tonic, that's when the daughter decides to tell him, "I think I'm going to get on birth control." Oh yeah. <laughs> Why are you telling your dad this ever? <laughs> Unless you need him to sign something for the pharmacy, right? That's something you should just keep to yourself, right? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Or just like, do anal sex. Those are your two He wants her dad to yeah, know that up. she's putting Come out. On. She's here for, <laughs> yeah. for a I'm good putting time. out. Not a lot, I'm putting out, dad. Smartly. Is the sister oh. hot or not in this show? Because I've always been torn on her. No. Because she looks like a hippie. Well, she's got kind of goof teeth. She kind of looks like a like if um like a rat became hot. Like a rat made a wish to be a woman. Uh I like, would do all right, it. you're gonna uh, yeah. be a seven out of ten though. And she's like, in I'll that take movie, it. I would do it. I'd be the guy that does the rat chick, and then she turns to make back her into a, a human. Rat. So you yeah, have fucking go, rats in movies. But then I go back to my job at the hotel. Like I would be like, no, I'd be the bad <laughs> guy that doesn't appreciate her as her as her <laughs> human rat. So form. wait, let me let me get this plot straight. <laughs> so you're yeah. gonna bang you're gonna bang a rat to make her a human, yeah. but then. Right. Go back to no. the, your job at the hotel. Yeah. I didn't know you had ah. a job at the hotel to start. I don't know yeah. where that came no. from. Oh, well, well, where else would a rat come to a life, right? She's got to be in a hotel. So doing you're going to bang the rat, yeah. but then when the rat becomes hot, you're no longer interested. 
No, when I, like, I can yeah, find a hotter yeah, rat. I can find yeah. a rat that's going to be a hotter woman if I bang enough rats in this hotel. There's, there's another guy be that's gonna in be a the 10. story that's going to like her for who she is, right? I'm just the guy that likes her for the superficial <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and then there's the other guy that likes her for, oh, you're really this. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm like that, that guy in the middle of the story that's just like, oh, I work at the hotel and I like stuff. And yeah, I like, I like boobies. Mm. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be hard to convince this rat woman after you fucked her and made her into a human to leave you alone and that you know, there's somebody better out there for her. I mean, you're kind of like, you're kind of like the, yeah, yeah. the glass slipper in the foot, man. Yeah. Like your dick's the foot and her puss is the Well, I mean, slipper. you got to look at it from her perspective. If you are a rat woman and then someone <laughs> fucks you as the rat woman yeah. for you to become pretty, you'd be like, what's wrong with that fucking guy? Yeah. Well, what about this? Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait part, this? What if somebody else fucks her? Through. What if somebody else fucks this, this woman who's turned into a woman because you fucked a rat and somebody else fucks her and she turns back into a rat? Cause you're not, cause it's your magic dick that keeps her human. You think about that? Uh, you tell her I, yeah. I thought yeah. you were going to say she doesn't become a, uh, a her person immediately, but two people fuck her as a rat woman. So she doesn't know which one <laughs> turned her. Oh, into you're doing, you're doing group woman. sex and with this. Rat do like a Morgan <laughs> Kobe style. <laughs> who, who can, who can no, turn no. rats into females? No, no. Into you guys are getting way, you're getting way too gross. It's like more of like a Cinderella thing where it's just like, Oh yeah. You just take advantage of her when she's not a rat. <laughs> That'd be a weird talent to tell people about. Like, how'd you find this out? You're like, one in a million shot, Doc. Yeah, one, no, in, don't one in a million shot. Out. I got to get All right. So anyway, <laughs> Kevin Arnold talking about jock strap. The uh, gym teacher presses on what a jock strap is. And his answer is, uh, it sounds like every Kamala Harris answer to any question, which was entertaining. Just dancing oh. around the issue and talking about the strap itself. Unburdened um, by what has been. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then <laughs> Kevin Arnold gets uh, the news, right? They hear about Brian Cooper dying, Winnie's brother, hot Winnie Cooper's brother. And he does have a crush on Winnie Cooper. So he finds her. He goes to the old climbing tree and he hopes that she's going to be there to say he's very sorry her brother died. And uh, he gives her his jacket and they look into each other's, other's eyes and he uses her trauma as a good time to slip her the first kiss of his life. And Second I said, good show job. in a row, said, good job. <laughs> incredibly traumatic event leads women to act out in some form of. of Are you talking about American Gladiators last time? No, this is the how... uh, Eric. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. It makes sense. The woman oh, yeah, yeah. Kidnapped and then she went to bang the hot dog guy. <laughs> the soup Nazi. As one it's... does, I guess. I don't Yeah. Well, Kevin Arnold is not a uh, a strong figure in literature, uh, so he needs the woman to be at her lowest so that he can go and uh, appear. Is this like um, Will Ferrell when he's doing the Yeah, funeral? go to funerals. <laughs> totally. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's right. 100% Kevin Arnold is the inspiration <laughs> for funeral crashers and Will Ferrell. <laughs> He also yeah. like uh, Kevin Arnold. On a the voice was like, she doesn't like me. On a bad yeah. day, I'm gold. <laughs> well, it's like Kevin I'm was like, normally we never a talked four about out of it. ten, but when they're grieving the loss uh, of the yeah. one, that day, I become like a ten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's also goes. We uh, we never spoke that play. day again, but I think Smart we all move. remembered. It's like, well, I'm sure she's talked to her therapist about it <laughs> for quite a long time. I'm sure she remembered the day her brother died, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. I and bet. then you took advantage of her grief to slip her the old tongue. Yeah. Good job. And put her in a jet. And I think put her in a Jets jacket. Oh, insult to injury. But I guess in the 70s, the Jets were. At 69. Did they win the Good. Super Bowl that year? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. He's like, hey, yeah. that's a Super Bowl. It's, like, jacket. it's so easy to win the Super Bowl. We'll, we'll probably do this every year. Yeah, keep that jacket. I don't need it. We'll be here every year. <laughs> yeah, my right, poor so dad, who's mad at his job all the time, bought me this cool hundred dollar <laughs> jacket just as the Super Bowl uh, team won. All right, what do you give it? What grade? Oh, uh, this is a, this is an A. This is an A show. I mean, uh, they did a great job. I think the the way that they did the dual dialogue with the um, Daniel Stern telling the story as a narrator as you're watching the story i think they made the they kind of changed the format for a bit because there's other shows that copied yeah it. yeah i was I'll trying to think up. of that if there was another show that had narration like that and i can't think of one at the time how, how yeah, i met before. your mother I before yeah. that time how yeah, i met I your mother how i met your mother thing. did it 
Yeah, it's, it's that got was the way same later, vibe. Obviously, yeah, kind of set the tone. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think like a B. I wasn't like super entertained. I think it was well done. The characters were developed and everything. I just, I'm not super into it. Um, it's not. I don't know. It's not a comedy really per se. It's more, I guess, a, a dra drama, right? Than more drama than comedy. Um, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's coming it's of age cool parts. Yeah, Co there's it's like, like it's like a coming of age story made well, for and, TV. And I'm trying to, you know, there's a lot of like cliche moments that struck me. But then I'm thinking, wait, wait is it cliche moment because they started it because it was like 30 years ago, you know? Um, well, exactly. Yeah. So it, it wasn't cliche, cliche at the time. Just, it's been copied so many times since. So it's, it's yeah, you, you got to look through the the lens at the time it was made. Um, but at the time, I wasn't that uh, super into it either. That's how she looks now. I just want to show you. This is, yeah. as of 2019, what Miss Winnie Cooper looks like. And uh, she is yeah. a mathematician. Hasn't aged a day. I mean. That's great. I mean, if. Uh, she's winning. She's winning at life. I'll say that much. And yeah, and if her mathematician skill is uh, avoiding how to age, good job, because she looks great. Not bad. All right, I agree. I'm an A. I give it an A. I think it's a great show. I love uh, every second of it. Could be your first wank. Could be your last wank. Mm. <laughs> that should be like. I like that you, on my deathbed. <laughs> you gotta have a I'm lawyer. Like, <laughs> like, get Winnie Cooper over here. She has to be the, the Alpha phone. and Omega. Video chat me. <laughs> I just need her to touch the tip once. I can't. My arms don't work, Sandy. Help me. <laughs> I make my wife whack me one more time to Winnie Cooper. Let's whack it out to her once every like time. And be good. First and last. First and last. That only one thing. <laughs> last time is a flat disc. I love. Ah. I, love right, so. I love you. <laughs> Okay, so ah, sorry guys, fighting this cold. Uh, all right, moving on to the frog. I uh, not what I thought it would be. I will say it's a it Korean, was weird, quote unquote thriller. Uh, the Koreans have a different definition of thrilling. Boy, than do they! My do. United States understanding. Oh, I will say that. Seems like you know, a lot of buildup. I've watched like at least six or seven Korean TV sh sh series for some weird reason. I just, they always have like bizarre concepts that are pretty interesting. This one, I'm like, what is going on here? I thought yeah. at first I'm like, is this the uh, shutter Island of Korean TV shows? I, <laughs> yeah. I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> Me neither. Yes! And especially at the end when the guy becomes uh, a retroactive hotel owning psychic. I think what? the guy at the end was the guy at the beginning when he was young. Well, yeah, like wasn't it two different timelines? It was the same yes. character, I thought. That's yeah. So I'm I'm with Rico on that. Like it's yeah. two different timelines, and you're seeing the one guy who's kind of collected now, but also weird. Well, hold on. Let me set the stage here. For the, we're, getting, we're getting too deep yeah. too quick. Let me set the stage here. Okay. So the show's called The Frog. It there. starts we're off like... with a guy, an older guy with glasses, strangling a bikini-clad girl in a pool, uh, which, by the way, I've never killed a woman or anybody, for that matter. But if I was going to kill somebody, strangling somebody in a bikini, not bad. Just well, gonna why say. would you? She's already wearing a bikini. Leave her around. I mean, if you're going to kill somebody, it's, no. it seems like a good, a good, a good it's target. Be a, like a, it's a hideous it. uggo. You don't want to. I don't want to kill some ugly person. I want to. No. I want to. I want to have like an attractive person in front of me. No, I want the attractive you person. Want to kill live. an attractive person? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, look, if I'm going to kill somebody, I don't want to waste my time with like, you know, I don't want to stalk. I, if I'm going to kill somebody, unless it's spur of the moment, I figure I'm yeah. stalking them. Do you want to stalk an ugly person or a hot person? No, but you, why you would you want to kill that. the hot person? Yeah, why you I'm kill presuming that I do. Let's just presume I'm a serial killer, like in this show. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I, I hope one gotta, day like, this builds up to this yeah. in court. <laughs> well, you're yeah. my lawyer, so you better you better figure it out. Your Start Honor, your honor the, the woman is clearly a fugly. 
Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. couldn't have done Nailed it. Me. He wouldn't have yeah. done it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to present the first episode podcast. From Notice sub- the difference. <laughs> September from her, 2024. Her nose to her eyes. The spacing is too Not big. Nobody no would symmetry. think that's attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, nobody would kill her. If, well, if, did you know that the woman was hot at the beginning? Because he didn't really show her. Well, I mean, I thought I, I don't know. I, I, because it looked like a good body. And I'm adding Asian. together that it's there, there. So there was. So anyway, it takes place. There's I two like, different. I like the timelines here. Apparently, nobody's fat in Korea. Yeah, no one's yeah. fat in Asia. They don't eat. Yeah, they're all yeah. fit. Charles Jr. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And they walk more <laughs> bicycle. But uh, so it, it's, it's it's an odd show. It starts off with a, a murder in a pool. And there's these current guys that are running out nice houses, like Airbnb style. And then there's this other side story that's the other half, which is an older hotel. And it's uh, like the, what is it called? Like the Overlook Hotel or something like that. That's for The Shining, but. Love you. I thought they were, so I was so confused, as I said, but I thought it was the same person, young and old. Like, because that. Yeah. Woman walked into the police station, who's the new chief, and this <laughs> fucking totally disrespected. And then it went for, in her box. It said first case 2001. Yeah. So then after then I thought we jumped back in time where the guy who's wearing the blue shirt is now wearing the white shirt and he's 30 years younger, whatever, 23 years younger. And yeah, he's, he's got his wife who's dead in the current time. And yeah, it's the synopsis said his wife died, but I don't think they ever explained how she died in the. Not yet, not yet. Though we also haven't met his daughter. He didn't have a daughter in the old hotel, but he has a daughter now because the other old man he gets drunk with is talking about hooking his son up with his daughter. Oh right. So that's the other thing. I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm like, There's is it supposed to be the same person on. or not? Yeah, what it's it's, it's, co- it's confusing. Yeah. As shit. Could the it's Koreans really like? the heavy dramatics where they're really into a soap opera and then they turn yeah. the soap opera into a murder mystery that it's like well, CSI you know else, soap opera. You know what else they love? A lot mm. of hotel talk. A lot of detailed <laughs> towels, <laughs> uh, pool cleaning talk, laundry talk. Uh, yes! Oh my gosh! Laundry, like a lot, a lot, a lot of, of there's a lot. There was a good ten minutes of laundry talk in this show, minimum. Uh, yeah, the guy says you had to take care of a pool. <laughs> <At the> beginning, <laughs> yeah. Every day, you got to clean the pool. Yeah, and it was it every day, day? When, when he was older, so and the guy that he was hanging out was that like his boss or who the fuck was that guy? I I, I thought at first it was his boss, but it's just his neighbor he's buddies with. That's I why I was like, why isn't he helping him that, clean the pool? Like no, I was, I think I was so confused. He's the guy that owns the property, I think. So maybe no, he's... I think they're just no, I think they're just neighbors and they own because they both are renting out houses. The one guy's wasn't ready, so the other guy took them. And I think they're, I think they're like similar properties. So they just swapped one for the other. They're like two, they built two houses that are the same and they're mirror properties, is my guess. And they're going to rent them out for, you know, yeah, for Airbnb rental. stuff. But then they have the old hotel. Which again, we're trying to figure this show out. So apologies to everybody. Um, which the couple, a couple runs, and a serial killer breaks down on the road, or they think he's he stopped, and he goes and stays in the hotel. But the guy's so nice to him, and he tells him the serial killer goes, "Oh, you're very nice," and he doesn't murder him, but ends up bringing a dead person in and chopping her up and leaving her in the hotel in numerous bits and pieces. And one of the most bizarre scenes. Again, I'm starting to figure out what the fuck is going on in this show. The guy walks through and sees the killer walking around the hotel in hindsight psychic vision as if he's in a dream following him. And it's like, because he was asleep. He sees himself asleep asleep on the desk. desk. That's why I think that was in the past. That's where I. But it was also in the past. It was like a day later. Yeah, in the past, in he's the past, so he was still the, young. It was no. just like a few and hours I, later. He's like, "Oh my god, I was asleep yesterday when this serial killer walked through the hallway with this dead person," and he yeah. was like reliving it in his mind how it probably happened and where he was. He was asleep at the desk, and so the serial killer just like walked right on by. This show is wacky. 
I guess, no uh, one else is staying in the hotel, I guess. How do they make no, money? They have one guest at a time. I know. Yeah. It's like business was good. I was like, I that think looked there's like two it. different no time there. going there. They, like Maybe three they girls have, left. Like, property taxes or anything back then. <laughs> yeah, probably not. No. <laughs> North Korea's taking all the property taxes. <laughs> that was a good old, those were the good old days of Korea was Korea. One Korea. Ah. One Korea, one murder. Kim Jong Un. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So then, then it. I don't know who the woman detective is, but she must have been the younger woman detective on the old time frame, and that was like the her one he first pushed place. in the bush. Yeah. The one that the one that got a phone call. Uh, talk about a, a real dynamite bang up uh, policewoman gets a phone call. Somebody going, oh, 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 and then they hung yeah. up. Oh, and she's yeah. like, Well. What's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and we got to go. You don't want to figure out where that call came call. from? No interest? No need. No need. No. Must have been a wrong and number. Meanwhile, we know what's for lunch. It's noodles. The whole show, they're <laughs> eating noodles. <laughs> it's always noodles. A lot of noodles. Lunch. Yeah. I love noodles. But me if me, I lived me, in. Me too. And I love Korean yeah. barbecue. I'd be like, hey, I already know it's for lunch. It's noodles. Or if not noodles, it's probably rice. Or yeah. a noodle-based substance reconstituted noodles into a flatter noodle. Yes. Or chopped up into little rice bits. <laughs> That's also a thing. <laughs> but or intestines. <laughs> the yeah, yes, I'm <laughs> slimy to go on those noodles. Uh, sorry, we had a noodle today. <laughs> All we've got is pig intestines. Ah, oh. so it goes. What's for dinner today? Slime. Mm. <laughs> Various okay. things you have to slurp. All right, Thank let's you. go. <laughs> hey, I'll commit murder at the hotel instead. No. So then, yeah. So then in the current time frame, he finds some woman spinning her tires out on the road and he somehow gets it out easily, but she couldn't. But, you know. Asian women drivers. I mean, come uh, on. forget about <laughs> what it. What are the odds that they would be able to drive? Can't believe That's... they give them licenses out there. But she's <laughs> apparently she's got some secrets because she's uh, number one a smoker, and you know that means something. And number two goes in to the and this is current day, by the way. So she stays at the house. And she sees a record player. And I love this part. I wrote it down. I love it so much. She's like, hey, <laughs> does that record player work? And he's like, yeah. So he takes her into the garage basement. And he's like, oh, my wife used to love these. Do you have any uh, songs or artists you like? And she's like, no. Like, not a one? Nothing? <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> like well, you things hear? Well, yeah, you I've never really listened to music before. You just want me to turn the record player on? It just... Just want to listen to the record scratch on it, you fucking idiot. She goes, those play records? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Nothing? So he puts on uh, the song that's been in this. It's like, I don't know, like a bluesy tune. Yeah, everybody classic. would know it. Classic. Yeah. Classic bluesy tune. And we find out later, like, this record's playing, and, you know, she's hanging out. And we find out later. <coughs> oh, God. Sorry, guys. Uh, we find out later that. He goes after this murder happens in the past. The guy who we suspect is the same person goes and takes the record off the player and he passes this broad. She's smoking on the side of the road and there's blood on the record. We don't see her kid, which is what I suspect may be tied in at this point. Yeah, that seems to be what the manhunt seems to be about afterwards. Yeah. The kid might be missing. She's, he has a little son that uh, he was playing with and fixed his little toy dog. But there's blood on the bottom of the record when he puts it back in the record slip. Ooh. So seems like a careless thing to get blood all over a record and just flip the record over and be like, ah, that'll be fun. I don't know yeah. how that records work. Women murder as well as they drive in Asia. It's like uh, if you get blood on the couch cushion, you just flip the couch cushion over. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Same with the record. Yeah, yep. makes sense. Flip it no, over. The bl blood will make it sound good. That's a, it's. That's what I say that. Say that phrase. Flip the record, right? Yeah, that's what. what uh, that, turn turn the page. Flip the record. Yeah, that's where it comes turn from. around <laughs> every now and then. You have a <laughs> Korean murder. Somebody get blood on your record player. <laughs> Korean one was pretty hot, if I remember. She was hot, but she kind of a dump ass. Uh, mm. yeah. Oh, like she, maybe it was just bad fitting pants. She got out of the car. She got a hot face, but she got out of the car, and I was like, 
That's a dumpy ass. Like, That's a dumpy <laughs> that ass. Gym woman. Like yeah, like, yeah, literally. She has like that, that like hot, thin, doesn't work out body. Like hot face, but like just eats nice, but doesn't ever actually work out. Like she's got no, no, but dog. Tone. Like, to, fill like those, a ch- to fill those pants out <laughs> made of chopsticks <laughs> join a girl korean pop band for a few years so you learn how to fill that booty out dancing that's all i have to say mm. they've got camps for this type of thing do you think in korea instead of like not to bring up nazi germany in a positive way because that's never a good idea but what if korea had pop camps <laughs> for their people like they have to i like, like it the, like yeah. the israelis you're forced to join the military and in korea you're forced to join the military i think too why do they have I, I pop it. dance camps to keep your ass? It's called the, the squat camps, where you're just basically doing thousand squats a day. The the K corps, the K pop corps. Squat them, squat them out. Maybe a little push ups <laughs> too. Them. Get them titties yeah. nice and uh, firm. Yeah, right. Get them perky. <laughs> squat uh, them out. I I've, like that. It's a new song. Probably not a good idea to mass the make women exercise just so they're more appealing to our. Not a good idea. I don't see anything uh, wrong with it. Not a good idea. I don't see wrong with it. I mean, I'm all for it, but it sounds like a, become... the only idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other idea. Uh, I'm a That's fan it. of when this sports only idea. They, when We have the 15, 15th consecutive cover of Sports Illustrated with a morbidly obese or elderly woman on it. I think our only option. Uh, is sports, if there's any ladies sports, that want uh, to uh, join the show and do squats <laughs> and push ups, you think has ever listened to this show? Any of the episodes? Yeah. I don't know if a person, a human being, uh, Chelsea. I think Chelsea still listens. She just doesn't not the whole show. episode. I imagine we might get him for like a minute or two. And no, like, what am I listening? To? We're not. Out. We're not an over. And then and then podcast. Brian talks about. We his were first far more off, sexist like, when we were when we did a yeah. podcast specifically talking about reality shows. We had one billion times the listeners, most of whom are women, and we were way more sexist on that show. But they liked it because they didn't like the women we were talking about, so it worked. Hmm. One now billion like- times more. Well, we probably we should go back to it. God damn it. We had a great concept and you guys fucked it up. So you didn't want to watch the terrible shows. Oh, it was yeah. soul sucking. It was terrible soul-sucking. people watching terrible shows. It was a great idea. Though. I thought, hit. I think that one girl, um, who's a horrible girl from the Hampton show. I think she Leslie. has like a Netflix special or something. I swear. Oh, I does. saw the, the stand quote unquote stand comedian. Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea, Kelsey. No. Yeah, she's a piece of shit. I don't care. Fuck her. She's a piece of garbage. Yeah, she did. She had a Netflix special. It made me furious. She is trash. She does comedy for two years because, I mean, look, I don't want to talk bad about women, but uh, (laughs) if you're following her comedy, (laughs) it would be the first time. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I'm sorry, but that's like, it is a safe space. Safe space. You can. Like, like, who (laughs) talked to a girl, had a podcast. She got paid a lot of money. To do, and I think it's now gone. Well, I what think she is she going to talk? She what? Why? Who wants to hear her talk about she what? Was uh, is Isra- Israeli asset from what I'm reading? Hakta was Hakta. Yes. Mm-hmm. So are they going to roll out like for the pagers exploding pagers of people's pants? They're like I hawked to those pagers, and they're like, oh, I was forgiven. I didn't know people still had pagers. That's incredible. I don't think there will after this. <laughs> well, again, Rico, they, they had VHS, VHS tapes until I think last I know. year. I got rid of my DVD player just to be safe. <laughs> Don, you're on the killing side. You're, you don't worry about it. You're oh, on yeah, the juice no. side. Oh, gosh. Can you imagine? This is like the most hilarious thing I've ever heard. It's, uh, it's pretty... I don't want it. I don't want uh, it on this podcast. We'll save for a political is... podcast. By okay. the way, Don, I'm gonna sure. you're gonna come on our politics podcast. Oh, uh, like, cool! I uh, accept. I'll talk. I'll I'll bring you in. I'll bring you in on that. Um, nice. All right. Anyway, so at the end, uh, I don't even know why the guy's like, uh, yeah, they they call us frogs. And I'm like, okay, but who's yeah, the frog? I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Know. Who I don't understand it. I, I don't who, no, I, who calls I think who frogs and why? Well. Well, the, the, again, the reason I, I brought this show up was I thought it was going to be the concept of frogging, <laughs> which is, as I explained earlier, yeah. hiding in someone's house without them knowing and living there and just being a creep Man, in their attic. Maybe it is. Maybe it is in a certain way, like 
that's what it means in Asian culture. It's like you're frogging, you're hiding in plain sight, you're doing weird shit. Uh, there's more I, to this show. I think I'm guessing something different. I'm going to guess yeah. it means you're frog because you are boiling in the water without knowing it. Interesting. Interesting. That's my guess for the frog is that they're boiling in water, not knowing it. Okay. Um, or as they say in uh, Asian cultures, hot pop. <laughs> they say please come again. or shabu shabu <laughs> shabu shabu <laughs> or how do I how do I say throwing a shrimp in my hat <laughs> um, yeah I don't know I, it, I'll be honest though the show I'll give my I'll give my analysis first for the frog even though I was the whole time like what is happening and how much are they going to talk about hotel management in this show <laughs> <laughs> i also kind of want to watch the next episode it's got it's kind of got me i kind of it fucking hooked me and i don't know why or how i don't i know why fucked by this show i'm this i'm the same way i was so confused <laughs> i'm like i need someone to explain it to me the yes. only way to be explained it is to watch more and hope the next <laughs> episode is really yeah. kind of genius um they're like we're gonna make people it's, watch it's so what fucking fuck retarded it's so korean i can't i can't not watch the next episode i have to watch it yeah i maybe korean tv is different than our american tv where they go we've got an episode to tell you a story they go no we're just gonna give you like half of the first episode <laughs> in an hour and then you just have to watch the rest because we just don't know how to tell stories <laughs> you're so intrigued by your own confusion just, you're, yeah I'm, I'm in i'm, I'm yeah, gonna watch right. the next episode like I this is too. terrible and, and, it's, and it's limited unlike know. eric which as we discussed was a bad show and is open-ended this is a limited series so you know it's gonna it's gonna start and an end that's like whatever six or eight episodes like we're in and we're out i'm in i'm, yeah. I'm gonna watch it the I'm show in. seems like there's a superhero or a ninja that's supposed to show up that never does that's the frog <laughs> just, yeah it's just uh it's just a frog that like, flies at a what is eyeballs. going on what is happening <laughs> where's this frog Sorry. all right so well I'll, I'll tell you my grade i i give it i give it a b minus and it doesn't all deserve right. it but it got like i said it got me i'm in i'm gonna watch the next episode so yeah i'm gonna give it a c because i've seen so many first episodes of things that are weird i don't think i'm ever gonna go back to this one <laughs> um if you do let me know what you see because uh maybe maybe i'll upgrade it to a b plus uh, or a b afterwards if, if anything cool happens all right Rico. what do you got Rico? i'm gonna go with a c too but a, a c with a, a lean towards a b plus <laughs> I, I originally had a C plus, but I'm like, I'm gonna watch the next episode. I can't give it anything less than a B if I'm oh, gonna no. watch the next episode. Like it got me. Every, every other show have to be not working, and then this show would have to work, and then I'd be like, all right, I'll see what's happening. But I don't think Netflix works that way. I think if, if I can watch one show, I can watch them all. I'm telling you. Mm. Mm. It's got me. <laughs> rivet, rivet. I'm gonna watch it instead of this boring ass football game. I'll tell you that. Ooh, what's the score? 14 3. Yes, Jets. Let's go. I bet on the Jets and the under. Hey, doubled up, Ke doubled up baby. That's Kevin oh. Arnold's team. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's get, give me some Winnie Cooper to kiss when they win. There I'm gonna call her go. tonight. Right. I'm gonna call her tonight and be like, hey, is this um Winnie Cooper? It says your real name is <laughs> I'll to Google it. <laughs> They're like so anyway uh the jets are winning i saw kevin kiss you with the jets jacket on anyway so when i die are can you in I LA? whack it to you <laughs> yeah what can we do some mathematics here that? Yeah, that i'm 45 yeah. i figure in 43 years i'll be dying what are you gonna be up to Put you, your calendar. you give your heart a lot more credit than i do Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Brian's gonna be one oh eight. Eighty eight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, know. dude, I'll live way long. I, I, I'll live way longer than that. I'll be. If you're I'll gonna, outlive either of you. You let's gotta keep drinking. You let's do a drinking let's do a tontine. Let's do a tontine. Let's get a safe. Let's hide it in the woods. We'll fill it with artwork. Whoever lives longest gets it. We'll have three keys. I guarantee I'll win. <laughs> uh, you are in. I'm in. Let's do it. Don's sure. in. Rico. Yeah. Sure. 
All right, guys, you heard it here first. We're going to need you, the first episode podcast listeners, to listen, share, like, subscribe to the show so we can afford to buy our tontine. And honestly, if you want to uh, you know, tweet at us at Brian McWilliams or at first episode pod is like no listeners or followers on Twitter. I put no effort into it. <laughs> but go ahead, you can tweet at me at Brian McWilliams and uh, let me know what you want us to put in the tontine. Tontine. If you have any fine works of art you'd like to donate, that'd be even better. Gold jewelry from your family still uh still a ring if anyone donates wife. gold i'm definitely not putting it in the tontine i'm just gonna yeah use it for myself brian's just stealing your that's going into the tontine possessions now it's going to the tontine <laughs> everything's going to the tontine Send all right so next trash. episode next oh i got a good episode. one i got a good one for a new show all right I, well because we have our old show which is as established most extreme elimination challenge on youtube it's on i, I think it's on like tubi Oh, What's the new YouTube. show, Rico? I'm going to put it into our spreadsheet right now for the first episode podcast. Um, well, I just saw a preview for it, and I do want to watch it anyways. Uh, the Penguin. Oh, on HBO. Yeah. Oh, okay, that sounds cool. Oh, okay. I didn't even know there was a, yeah. a show coming out on HBO. Yeah, I think All right, I'll just watch the Penguin tonight. Part of the, D, the DC universe, right? Colin oh. Farrell is uh, going to be in it again. Okay, look at you. You're going cool. real... Uh, real uh comic i thought he reviews. was good as the penguin so all right yeah. cool all right so most next episode guys in two weeks most extreme elimination challenge and new show on hbo max the penguin there you go all right Love anybody that, uh final words anything to add in to wrap the show up don uh, go ahead give your signature sign off it was wonderful. Bravo! I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good. Yeah, though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo!